Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 852. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about 600,000 new millionaires created in 2020 since the pandemic. Now, I'm not talking about this to make it more painful. Some of you I know are really hurting out there, but I do want to make you think, and I do want to show you a way that you can get out of that financial pain, because there's probably one thing you're not looking at in the right way that would make the most difference for you getting out of a bad financial situation, and we're going to talk about that. But first, I want to share with you some of these statistics that are absolutely astounding. First of all, they are attributing the 600,000 new millionaires since the pandemic to the stock market and rising asset prices. So that's directly in the study that Spectrum Group did. We've reported on them before. They are the premier surveyors and pollsters and researchers of wealth in the country. They do a really good job analyzing where the wealth is changing, where it's shifting, and who's making it. At the end of 2019, there were 11 million people that had $1 million to $5 million in investable assets. That would be, of course, things like real estate, stocks, bonds, cryptocurrencies. At the end of 2019, there were 11 million people with one to five million in investable assets. And at the end of 2020, there were 600,000 more at 11.6 million people with $1 million to $5 million in investable assets, and that is an all-time high in the U.S. When we look at people who are worth $100,000 to $1 million, in 2019, there were $31.8 million, and in 2020, $32.3 million. So again, the $100,000 to $1 million investable assets also moved up, but what really moved was those with $25 million or more the ultra wealthy, they grew by 18,000 more people with 25 million or more. It was 196,000 in 2019 and 214,000 in 2020. And this is really interesting. Over the long term, the number of American millionaires has doubled since 2008. Now that's really interesting because of course, 2008 was when we had a terrible recession. A lot of people lost real estate, lost their homes. There was a huge meltdown in the real estate market. And of course, all of that has come back now and gone on to all time highs. So very, very interesting that the number of American millionaires has been able to double since 2008. And it shows you that there was opportunity to be had in 2008. Certainly people who were buying and investing in homes at that time have done very well since then and have seen their prices go up strongly in most markets. And that can be a key difference with investors is that some people are seeing recessions as opportunities. And in times when most people get scared, they are going in boldly and buying things on sale and being able to benefit from that later. You see, it's during times of recession when you get special prices for assets, when asset prices pull back or decline and give you a special opportunity to buy low. So these opportunities in the stock market and the real estate market, they only happen every so often. And forecaster Martin Armstrong talks about an 8.6 year panic cycle in the stock market, which is pretty spot on. And I wrote about in the Wealth Heiress book, But about every 8.6 years, we do have a panic cycle where stocks do sell more at a discount. Now this didn't happen to fall on that 8.6 year cycle. This was separate, but this was caused by the pandemic. It wasn't caused by regular business cycles. So that kind of makes sense to me. 
Also, the total wealth of U.S. households is at a record $130 trillion at the end of 2020, which is up $5 trillion and mainly attributed to equities markets. So maybe you're listening to this and feeling very frustrated. Why did some people's wealth go up and other people not do as well? If you're asking that question and if you're feeling frustrated, the first place you wanna look is your asset allocation. Did your asset allocation allow you to be positioned in the right assets to benefit? Because what a lot of people have been doing over the past several years is putting all their extra money in paying off their mortgage. I've noticed that this was a trend. I've warned you, I don't agree with this trend. And what happened to those people who paid off their mortgage is they benefited maybe 2% or 3% by not having to pay that rate of interest but they missed out on the higher stock market returns. My point is that people that chose to pay off their mortgage created an opportunity cost because you weren't invested in higher growing assets, which is my whole point of why I never recommend that you pay off your mortgage early, especially at these very low interest rates. Why? Because then you're not allocating your cash to your retirement account. And had you put your money in your retirement account, it probably would have been in the stock market and it probably would have grown a lot last year and your numbers would look completely different. This is what I've been trying to tell you over the last several years is that this trend of thinking that debt is bad and wanting to get rid of their mortgage debt have made a huge mistake they have paid off low interest rate debt that is tax deductible and that is not where the debt problems are. The debt problems are in the higher interest rate credit card debt. That's the debt you wanna pay off, but the mortgage debt you wanna leave alone and you can make an extra payment or pay extra principal and pay your mortgage off sooner. You can definitely do that, but you don't wanna put all your cash to pay off your house and not put it in your retirement plan where it can get double digit rates of return over the long term by being invested in the stock market. And that's where people are really missing the boat. They're not getting their asset allocation right and this is creating a situation where people could have been a lot better off in the last year, but instead, by focusing so much on trying to get rid of their mortgage debt, they really shot themselves in the foot. So your asset allocation is always where you wanna look if you're not happy with how your investments are going. You wanna look at how are your investments divided over different asset classes, some in large caps, some in mid caps, which are medium sized companies, some in small caps, which are smaller companies that grow faster. You also wanna have some in international, and real estate investment trusts. And I think up to a 5% allocation in cryptocurrencies is crucial right now with the high, high, high returns we're seeing in cryptocurrencies. So even during a catastrophic year like 2020, many people benefited mainly by how they invested. It always comes down to my wealth building formula, money compounding in time equals financial freedom. How much money you have to invest is often very much the same. It doesn't change a lot year to year. How much time you have or how many years you have till retirement also is changing each year as you're getting a year older, but you had to start really young in order to give yourself more time. And if you're starting later, well, time and getting more time isn't really an option unless you figured out a way to stop aging. So the answer really is to get superior compounding rates. You want to know how to compound your money at a higher level. And that's the whole difference with investing in the stock market and a portion of cryptocurrencies versus paying off a 2% or 3% mortgage loan. It's a world of difference over five, 10, 15 years. It's an enormous difference. And this is where I see part of the great divide is in how people have chosen their asset allocation for their assets. I think that's the place to look That's how to get back on your feet, get yourself going in the right direction again, is get your wealth building into assets that are compounding at higher rates of return. 
If you want to know more about my wealth building formula, money compounding and time, check out your already a wealth heiress, now think and act like one, six practical steps to make it a reality now. It was voted one of the all time best wealth books by Book Authority, and you can find it on Amazon, amazon amazon.uk or your local bookstore. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.